Welcome Algebra 2 students, Honors Algebra 2 students. Um, I'm on page 26 in your student journal. We're just going to talk about lesson 2.1. All right, so we're talking about quadratics in this unit, which is a super fun topic and something that you will definitely need throughout the course of um, throughout the course of this whole year, to be honest with you, and, and be all right, so quadratic functions. You should probably be um, familiar with the, the vertex form, right? So this is the format of the equation that we just kind of focused on in the first unit of our year. So this is called vertex form because the H and the K are kind of given to you. But regardless of whatever format you're given with the quadratic function, there are three different forms. Um, you um, So this is what we call standard form. And then this is what we call intercept form. So regardless of whatever format you're given, what makes a quadratic function or a formula a quadratic as opposed to say a linear or cube root or square root is the highest power of x is two. So if you were to like distribute all this out or whatever, you could know but the highest power of x is 2. There's no x cubes or x fourths or anything bigger, um, and there has to be an x squared in your equation in order for it to be considered a quadratic. All right, we call the shape of a parabola, um, or we call the shape of a quadratic a parabola. So I always kind of use it as a u-shaped graph. So a u-shaped graph, and this is what we call a quadratic when you graph it, is a parabola. Um, all right, so the vertex of your parabola you should already know is that h and k. It's not negative h, it's um, just h and k, remember, because of the formula. And what I want you to also understand, because of the way your parabolas work, whether they open up or whether they open down, so your U-shaped graph, um, this is either your min or your max point. So your vertex is really at the bottom if your parabola is facing up, and it's at the top if your parabola is facing down. It's that min or max point on your graph. And then likewise, the last thing is vertex form, which we've already talked about, but that's that formula where your quadratic is in a specific format, and it looks like this. All right, let's talk about some translations just to make sure we're good. Um, we should be somewhat familiar with translations in vertex form. So horizontal and vertical, uh, remember horizontal is, a, just as a re refresher, is uh, a change in your h value. So if it's, um, when h is less than zero, it shifts left. When h is greater than zero, it shifts right. And again, it's going to look a little different in your equation. If you said x minus h squared, um, I'm sorry, x plus h is going to shift left and x minus h squared. So in this case, when, when, um, your graph shifts left, h is actually a number less than zero here. So we'll give it as like negative two. And the reason why this then changes is because this is gonna say x minus a negative two, which changes this to say x plus two. So this is what your equation would look like when your h value is less than zero. This is what your equation would look like when your h value is greater than zero. So that's why a lot of people think it looks like the opposite is because of the signs that change because of your function. So just be careful that that's not, you know, ultimately that you're thinking that the h value is, you know, negative or positive and, you know, so forth. So again, it follows the rules if it shifts left when h is less than zero, shifts right when h is greater than zero. Um, and this is what the function would look like, like your equation would look like. Shifting up and down, that's pretty basic. k is less than zero, it shifts down. When k is greater than zero, it shifts up. Remember, k is that number that's being added to your entire function at the end. Um, all right, I just kind of wanted to go over one basic example. So if I gave you um, something you might, you might see on a test or a quiz, if I gave you a function in vertex form, and I said, describe your transformations, um, I might ask you to say this would mean 2 to the left and 5 down. So if I asked you to describe your transformations here, you would notice that this is 2 to the left and you notice that this means it's five down. So if you were to graph your function, you know, compared to say a parent function, which is gonna be having no shifts on your graph, if I went two left and five down, it would look something like this. 
So again, it's kind of like you're picking up your parabola and shifting it to the left five down and then dropping it in place. So again, what you're actually shifting each individual point, you know, left two and down five of the parabola. And so that's why the whole function kind of shifts in that manner. All right, next page, page 27. So this one kind of talks a little bit about the reflections and so forth. We talked about this in the last unit. I just want to remind you that a reflection in the x-axis means you're multiplying the entire function by that negative 1. So it's like you're taking negative 1 multiplied by your function. Uh, reflection in the y-axis means you're multiplying your inputs or your x values by negative 1. And I'll give you an example of that here in a second. Horizontal stretches and shrinks. Again, what you need to remember about that is that it affects the x value when you're talking about horizontal. So this is also the one where you, you want it to kind of correlate the fact that there's a reciprocal. So like if it's a horizontal stretch of one fifth, that mean, or by a factor of one fifth, that means you're gonna type, put in here like five x, because in order for it to stretch or shrink horizontally, you need to kind of take that reciprocal function. Um, a vertical stretch or shrink is something that you're multiplying the entire function by. So there is no reciprocal action there. If you said that there was a vertical um, stretch of seven, you would multiply seven times your entire function. And again, what that's gonna do, um, similarly what it's gonna do is gonna stretch, make your parabola narrower or wider. Um, and so that's what's gonna kind of do to your overall function. So in this unit, unlike last unit, we're only focusing on quadratics, which is kind of nice. We're kind of pinpointing just quadratics. So we're not looking at like square root, cube root, absolute value, anything like that. We're just looking at quadratics. All right, I did want to go over a couple quick examples just so that you guys can make sure that you understand it. So again, the directions would say something like describe your transformations. And I might give you something like, um, you know, f of x is x squared, um, and then I might g of x is negative 3x squared. And so what I'm looking for you to do here is to describe what happens on, um, on your function with the, obviously, with the negative and the 3. So there's actually two different transformations here. First of all, this negative, um, and if you notice, it kind of follows this format here, which means it's a reflection in the x-axis. So because the entire function is being multiplied by x, by negative 1, not just the so reflection over the x-axis, that's one of your transformations. The three is another type of transformation. It's being multiplied by your entire function. So that would imply that it's a vertical stretch or shrink. And since it's greater than one, so when a is greater than one, it's a stretch. Another way it moves away from the x-axis, it's stretching more vertically than it is horizontally. So you would say this is a vertical stretch. And you would say by a factor, of three. So again, no reciprocal when it talks about vertical stretches and shrinks, and so it's a reflection over the x-axis and a vertical stretch by a factor of three. All right, let me give you one more example so you can kind of see. Um, if I gave you, again, we'll start with kind of your parent function, so f of x equals x squared. Uh, this time I will give you one-fourth x squared minus two. Okay. Notice on this one that you are, um, again, that one-fourth. Think about what's happening with this one-fourth. It's being multiplied by x, not the entire function, just x. So if you are going to go up here, what you're referring to here is this is that vertical stretch and stretch where you're multiplying just the input of the x values by that one-fourth. So because you're multiplying it by one over four, which means it's a number less than one but greater than zero, we call this a horizontal stretch. And the reason why is because think about one and four, right? You're stretching up one, so vertically you're stretching one, but you're stretching it four horizontally, which means it's gonna make it really wide. So you're gonna stretch it up one, but four on the, on the other axis, on your x-axis. So it's gonna be a horizontal stretch. And here's the thing, by a factor of four. So you would say by a factor of one-fourth, because that implies that it's actually not stretching, right? Um, so it's getting bigger horizontally. So what, again, we're kind of switching the way we talk about it. So we're not talking about a vertical stretch. We're talking about a horizontal. So you would have to take the reciprocal of it because it's stretching more horizontally. So up one over four. So like kind of think of like rise over run. You're stretching more on the, the, the run part of your graph. All right, the minus two um, simply moves your function down 
two units. So it's a translation down two units. All right, let's do a little bit of practice. So I'm on page um, 28 of your student journals. We're just going to kind of do a few of these. Um, when I ask you to kind of, um, you know, graph the function, I'm just going to actually ask you just to sketch. So it says describe the transformations and then graph the function. So on this one, what you're looking for is what kind of translation or transformation is this? I would say this is an up four. So it's a translation of moving up four. And so if you think about where your normal parent function would be, right, at the vertex would be zero, zero. Um, this means that my function would be literally just moved up four. So it would look something like that. And again, I didn't sketch every single point, which means that I didn't get the, you know, you know, 100% exact. But again, we're just looking for a sketch here. Um, number two has you, again, vertex form. This has me going to the right one. And it has me moving down three. So those are my two transformations. So if I start at my vertex zero, zero, that would be my parent function to the right one and down three. Whoops, I gotta make sure I use the right scale here. Right one, we're counting by twos. And down three would be about right here. And so therefore, <clears throat> the parabola opens up and it would look something like that. So I would have a vertex of one, negative three here, whereas this vertex would be zero, four. Uh, number three, there's an X or a negative out in front. That's a reflection over the X axis. Again, because it's multiplied by the entire thing. This plus nine means I'm moving left nine. So I'm going to move left nine. So here's six. Um, looks like here's left nine. And, so the, and then it's going to be reflected. So it's going to look like this. So my vertex would be negative nine, zero on that one. All right, let's do some others. Um, all right, so the next one says x squared minus 7. This is a shift of down 7. So again, just a literal translation of down 7. So we're about right here. The function is going to open up, and it's going to look something like that. So 0, 7 would be my vertex. Number five, the one third causes me to have a vertical shrink by one third. So in other words, what it's gonna do, it's gonna make, it's gonna, so again, kind of think of it as like rise over run, but more like what I want you to think of it as is that you're stretching the function one vertically and three horizontally. So what is that gonna do to my graph? If I stretch it up and down one, but only in three horizontally, that's gonna make my, my parabola a lot wider. So again, it's going to make that parabola like spread out. And then the m minus six means I'm going to move down six. So I'm going to move down six first just because it's easier. And it's going to have a wide graph. Looks like this. Yeah, so that's my dog barking in the background. Jack, um, that's my dog barking in the background. I apologize. All right, last one on this little section. Well, almost. The negative four X. So this is going to be a reflection over the y-axis. And the reason why is because it's changing the inputs, right? So it's being, the negative is, is happening to the x. It's on the inside of those parentheses. So it's a reflection over the y-axis. It's also that 4 is going to cause a horizontal shrink by a factor of 4. So again, this 4 is going to cause me to move... So think of it as like, again, rise over run, if you will. You're moving up, you're stretching it four, so vertically, and only one horizontally. So it's going to shrink horizontally because you're only moving it, you're not moving it as horizontally as you are vertically. So what happens here is your horizontal shrink, again, we're going to, whoops, I forgot, you got to take the reciprocal of it. It's going to shrink by one fourth because you're, you're literally, um, you're making it one fourth as wide, basically. So it's going to be a skinnier graph. So when you're reflected over the y-axis, uh, well, I guess I'll just use solid line here. So your parabola is going to look something like this. Um, a reflection over the y-axis with a parabola, 
think about your reflection left and right. Um, it's it's going to be a mirror image of each other. So there's not really a, a look. There's not going to be any difference in that one. Um, and so you don't have to, it's not going to actually show up on your graph so much. I still want you to write down that it's a reflection over the y-axis so that you understand that. And the reason why is because of this um, negative numbers being squared, which you know that a negative number being squared is the same thing as a positive number being squared um, because it's, all, it's ultimately going to be... Um, positive either way because when you square a negative you get a positive number so that's why there's no physical looking change on that one but you can still recognize that it's a reflection over the y-axis all right last but not least describe the transformations of your graph and um compare it to like the parent function of the quadratic so again when they say that they want you to compare it to um x squared so no shifts no reflections nothing no shrinks or stretches nothing all right, so I would just list them. So the negative, that's going to reflection over your x-axis. The 10 causes me to have a vertical stretch by 10. Because again, it's going to stretch more vertically than it is horizontally. The minus 5 is going to cause me to move right 5. And the plus 7 is going to cause me to move up 7. So there are four different transformations in this function, and we kind of need you to get all of them. The last thing it says, identify the vertex. Should be fairly easy for us now. Um, so it's five positive seven, because we went right five and up seven. So my vertex is five positive seven. All right, that's it for 2.1. Um, if you have any questions, write them down in your newspaper on your notes, and we will go over them in class. Thanks, guys.